I think that one of the key challenges is to actually think about the future of cities in a way that is always positioned um, from where we are standing, from where we are experiencing the city. Um, if I speak from there, one of the main challenges that I found right now is that it's sometimes very difficult for those who live in the cities to connect the way in which many of the urban places where we live are directly, sometimes very specifically directly connected with areas of disposition. But I think that one of the main challenges as people who are experiencing the city is to really reflect how many of those experiences that we enjoy are actually connected to processes of disposition within the city per se or actually in the so-called um, rural areas. Um, so that is for me one of the main challenges as someone that has been living in different, let's say, um, cities in Europe. How can we make that connection on an everyday basis? How can we teach that connection? And how can we live and pass this experience of connecting how some of the activities we do um, are deeply implicated with this position in other areas of the city or in rural, so-called rural areas? One of the specific elements of a decolonial understanding of land is that land is in us and we are connected to land. Now, this comes from different cosmovisions, different worldviews about land that have been traditionally um, erased by mainstream understandings of land as a resource or as something that you can own or something that you can uh, possess if you have the right money or if you can access the right amount of capital. Um, so from a decolonial perspective, the way we challenge not only mainstream um, accumulation by dispossession and all these global circuits of um, extraction of resources from land is also by foregrounding and focusing on understandings of land that are not necessarily referring to it or leaving the land more than understanding but actually leaving the land not just as a resource but something that we are deeply connected to this connection with the land is totally lost or is a relationship of extraction and exploitation um, that's why from a decolonial perspective we constantly are in conversations with people that leave land and sense land in a completely different way that we are normally educated to see land as something that simply we enjoy or that we can own. And every time that I teach about um, struggles against land grabbing and ecocide, um, I constantly go back to this particular phrase from um, one very important um, Lenca indigenous leader, uh, Berta Cáceres, who was murdered um, by uh, private capital interests when she was defending her land. And in, in one international event where she was re receiving this prize for her, um, yeah, her uh, activism, she remembered the people in the audience, people like us, city dwellers in the global north, that land uh, is something that we belong to. Land never uh, is something that uh, you can own and, 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 and make use of it. And it might sound like, you know, like alien or, or even romantic, but there are hundreds of people, if not millions of people around the world, who really have this deep connection with land. That they really cannot understand land as something that you can simply use for the benefit of your own private interest. And just just actually changing this way in which we think about land, but also about oceans, for example, or forests, not just land, but forests, oceans, um, as something that we belong to, I think that that immediately can help us 
here in this context to relate very differently to what we are actually now starting to understand that we need to care. Not because it belongs to the humanity or to us, but because we belong to it. So that is a very concrete example. Um, and I can speak about other, other, other ones, but I think that this in its simplicity, it actually shows the complexity of actually living through those principles. This specific use of the notion cuerpo, territorio, tierra, cuerpo, tierra, territorio, uh, body, land, territory, is actually uh, coined by um, representatives of the uh, uh, comunita uh, feminismo comunitario territorial. One of the uh, key representatives of one that um, I have had the pleasure of read her work is Lorena Cavnal. By bringing also the notion of territory, for example, we inhabit a, a, a urban territory. How are we relating to this urban territory? Most of us, by consumption. This is the main relationship that we have to the territory that we inhabit in, in, in these mega cities or uh, cities. And what she's actually inviting us to think is that we cannot think about or relate to the territory that we are living in without also thinking about the role of our bodies there. Whose bodies are being actually, you know, um, including in the territories where we are living in these um, cities. And if we go into that direction, then we will see that there are very particular bodies that are constantly excluded from the city. Now, in the context of the research that she does and the activism that she's doing, it's fantastic to see how um, her community and other indigenous communities are connecting the question of body and territory and land to also highlight the resistance that women, especially indigenous women, are actually putting forward against the destruction of, of not only of their bodies, because they are being uh, fed with you know, genetically modified uh, crops, but also because they are the ones who pay the price of opposing uh, land grabbing by multinationals, by mining companies, etc. So it's a term that can help us to connect what so far appears as if it is disconnected. I cannot. And the reason why I cannot is because they have been telling us this directly. Mm -hmm. um, I am coming from Mexico. Uh, I'm a mestiza, which means, which means that I'm from a, a mixed background between uh, indigenous cultures and the colonizers that arrived to Mexico. And this makes me the norm. I'm the norm in the country. And so far, this means that I occupy a position of privilege. And if I speak for the Zapatistas, I'm actually committing an act of injustice. Something that perhaps is happening is that um, there has been this incredibly rich debate that is, of course, related to struggles for land, in which women, not only indigenous women, but also Afro-descendant women, marginalized women, are actually understanding that the um, recovery of the land cannot happen without the um, decolonization of who they think they were, but not only them, the whole society. And this cannot happen without the de patriarchalization of society. So I think that this, this rich debate and activism that is connecting patriarchal violence to the question of um, capital exploitation of the land, and at the same time is inviting people to think their relationship to land, somehow um, is attracting people to think more carefully who is actually leading these conversations? Who is actually putting the body, literally the body, when they are resisting um, appropriation by multinational corporations? And in many cases, these are women. Not only women, but in many cases, these are women. I think that the reason is 
that they are connecting struggles that we tend to see separate or that we tend to see irrelevant because the end goal is, you know, uh, get rid of capitalism. No, it's not just get rid in, uh, getting rid of capitalism, it's also the patriarchalization, getting rid of the logics of violence. And, and this is why we can see that now there is so much interest and so, more, so much presence, which is amazing, it's fascinating. Well, first of all, my position in relation to that question is that um, they are not part of the same coin at all. Um, feminism uh, can be very imperial and very colonial, um, and it can reproduce uh, the very logics that are being resist resisted through uh, claims for decolonization, contemporary and uh, in the 50s, uh, uh, 50s, 60s. What is the contribution of decolonial feminism? I think that first of all we need to understand that decolonial feminism is part of a long tradition of thinking um, not only um, uh, compartmentalize or separate existence as if we were only women. We come, we think through the idea that we are living plural lives and therefore we are not just women, we are occupying positions of privilege, ra racial, economic, and so forth. Therefore we cannot just think the world through a gender perspective or just through the gender uh, gaze that is going to give us a very specific reading of what is the problem in, in, in contemporary societies. The specificity of the colonial feminism is that our point of departure is not gender, but it's coloniality. And by coloniality, I mean we are interested on what the category gender, which is as false as any other form of social classifications that we tend to confuse with our identity, um, is actually generating something really terrible that is erasing many of the aspects that we are. We actually want to go beyond analysis of gender because gender in many cases has um, been treated as a universal, as something that has always existed, and this contributes to erase ways of sociability, ways of relating to each other, to our bodies, our sexualities, that are not gendered, and were never gendered, but we read them as gendered. We are concerned with that, exactly what were before, because this is the only way from our point of view, going back to remember, in order to go beyond gender. This is what is the task of the colonial feminism, at least from my perspective. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Yeah, done. <laughs> <laughs>